Now that we have our protein structure file, we can make a mutation to the protein that we're interested in studying. So what I've done is I've started with a fresh uh, VMD application. I closed everything out and I'm starting from scratch in VMD. I'm going to load the molecule that we just created. So that was uh, this CSN. You need to first load the protein structure file and you'll notice nothing happens here in the display window. You then want to load the PDB file and you'll see it shows up and it has the white hydrogen atoms that were added in the last step. You want to make sure that that is the structure that you loaded. Uh, you'll also notice that in the main window it only loaded one thing. That PDB file is actually held within the PSF file in a sense, so they're associated with one another. So now to make the mutation, we want to go to Extensions, Modeling, Mutate Residue. That will open the graphical user interface for that. And if you only have this one structure open, it does a good job of guessing which one you want to work with. So it is guessing that the input file, uh, protein structure file, is CSN.PSF and the PDB is CSN.PDB. Uh, it does require both of these inputs, so it's important that we created that PSF in the last step of this tutorial. And although it doesn't say so, this is the output here where it says mutated. I'm going to change that to CSN so that it has the same sort of labeling we've been using. And then I'm going to give it the mutation that we're making, which is mutating from serine at position or residue number 179 to aspartic acid, which has the label D. Um, in a future video I'll show you how to uh, mutate serine to phosphoserine. Um, what we're doing with this project is looking at how phosphorylated amino acids affect the structure of the enzyme here. Um, and so the aspartic acid mutation gives a negative charge to what was a serine uh, so that we can look at the charge effect that would be there because of the phosphate. Um, but as I say, I'll show you how to actually do a phosphoserine mutation in a future video. Okay, so the target residue is the next thing here. That's 179. And the ID I'm sorry. Uh, we actually don't need that. That's an optional input there. The, the target ID is the 179. That's the residue that we're trying to mutate. And we need to give it the ASP uh, designator for mutating to aspartic acid. And it should be that that's all we need so we can run the mutator. And you see things happen here if you go to the console window, you can open that through the extensions menu. Uh, it'll tell you that it completed successfully. <coughs> there was a warning. Um, so you can take that to heart. Typically what you want to do is um, just check your mutation once it's made. And so we can do that uh, by going into our explorer and here are the two new files that actually automatically creates a protein structure file and a PDB file. Let's look at our PDB file. And what I want to do, we start with amino acid 6 here, residue 6. I'm going to scroll down to 179. And I see here that it's been mutated to aspartic acid. So residue 179 aspartic acid. You can check that it's actually the correct atoms. Um, I've never had a problem with that. Um, just for comparison, we can look at the original PDB file. And we can scroll down to residue 179 here. And 
we see that we started with residue 179 being serine, and it's now been mutated to 179 aspartic acid in the new file. So it appears that our mutation has happened the way we expected. And so we're ready to move on to the next step. Um, it is possible, if you would like to, to start with this mutated PDB and protein structure file, you can load those into VMD and you could do a second mutation and you could continue that and make as many mutations as you like. Um, it's just an iterative process where you have to start um, with the wild type and perform one mutation at a time.